Hey everyone, welcome back to the weekly Monday Motivation Podcast, No More Excuses. I am your host, Sandy Ballard, the super badass business coach. Yeah, that's trademark because I have an attorney right there. I'm pointing to her. It's Karen. I'll get to her in a second. Um, this week, uh, we are recording this. So you'll, if you're listening to this in your car, you can go to YouTube and watch it or on Facebook and it'll redirect you to YouTube to watch this. So um, I'm starting to have a podcast guest on video, I guess, once a quarter. So Karen's the lucky first one this year. Um, as I've been talking about, the first quarter is all about leveling up. And with that, I've discussed in the last few weeks about helping you check progress, just really getting invested in the results that you desire. So you'll work harder towards your goals, right? Envisioning the results and realizing that there really is no magic pill other than putting in the work. And last year's pandemic, as I like to say, um, has really helped and hurt a lot of businesses. And that's why I'm excited to have Karen on here. You know, other, while others are really doing well, others are really hurting. And the thing is, if you have the proper connections and team in place, you can recover faster and easier. And last year, my podcast guests were really about mindset and marketing tips and not giving bullshit excuses when shit goes sideways and recovering during the pandemic. And now we wanna switch gears and really take it to that next level, hence leveling up. So I'm excited to have Karen on here because with the first quarter, um, really preaching about leveling up and staying focused, I wanted to bring on an expert to discuss with you to make sure that all your hard work, all your energy that you put into your business, whether it's a side gig going full, full blown or whether you're still keeping a side gig or whether it's your full job. I wanna make sure you, it, that things don't go out the window because you're trying to do it yourself, all right? Or have you, maybe you have done it yourself and we wanna switch things over and have you really uh, learn from an expert. So I wanna welcome Karen Young. She's with Gutwine Law. Did I say it right? Yes, Gutwine Law. Gutwine Law. Um, I met her on a live webinar for podcasting. And uh, she works with businesses of all shapes and sizes. So no matter what size of business you are, listen up. And I want her, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch views here so um, she can then be the speaker. Oh, and it's still me. <laughs> Replace pin with Karen. There we are. There's you fool, Karen. Front um, center. Yeah, I want you to explain a little bit because um, you work with established businesses, startups and nonprofits but also right. a focus on women and minority owned businesses. So I do. Yeah. So yeah, explain a little bit more about what you do and especially the term social entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on. You have a great podcast, Sandy. I'm so excited to be a guest um, on your podcast. And so I've been an attorney for 15 years and I forget and I tell people in my head, I'm younger than I um, I really am. And so, yes, I've been an attorney for 15 years and have worked in corporate America in large corporations. And so I still work with large corporations that have, you know, 1500 employees or 500 employees or five employees or me, myself and I, and I'm the one employee. Um, and so I, I work with um, a lot of women owned businesses or minority owned businesses that um, someone who still has a day job and is and working um, a side hustle or a business that they're doing at night or just a passion project that they're starting on the side that may or may not ever become their full-time job or something that I worked with one client who she started her own business. It became so um, overwhelming. She quit her full-time job. Her husband quit his full-time job, became her employee. They sold their house, they moved to Florida, and she's still doing that job and, and they're awesome. um, moving on and, and growing. That's not everyone's destiny, but it was theirs. And so um, I tell folks, I will absolutely work with someone who's opening a yoga studio or a hair salon or selling a, um, a product that they've created or someone who's you know starting a business with three or four partners or is an established business that they've inherited from um, taking it over or buying it or they're an accounting firm or um, a manufacturing facility okay. with you know several sites. So businesses and, and um, nonprofits of all shapes and sizes. A social entrepreneur is really the blend of a nonprofit, a, a, 
a nonprofit organization that has a charitable purpose that's feeding the homeless, educating children, okay. um, cleaning up waterways, and a for-profit that's designed to make money and blending the two, Interesting. making money while doing good. Okay. And really bringing them together. So I fully believe there's no way that this world is going to operate and do all the good that we're going to do without private enterprise right. at the home and doing that. And so awesome. a social entrepreneur is either, you know, hiring hard to hire individuals, either maybe um, intellectually disabled individuals, are there, are there employee base or formerly incarcerated people who have been out of incarceration or their employee base, or the business is um, solar power generation or clean water in third world countries. And they're a for-profit solving okay. some issue in the world, but they're doing it in a for-profit cool. model, not a nonprofit. Well, I but learned something today. Social. Thank you. It was like, okay, somebody, because I hear um, a lot of terms and, and usually it's, um, I would say habitual entrepreneur, but um, so serial, entrepreneur. serial entrepreneur. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay, this is social, not yeah. serial. Okay. Right. Well, social, not serial. Right. And um, so it's, it's that blend of okay. business with a purpose or business with a mission. You'll hear that often. Business and it's that mission. blend of nonprofit with a for-profit. Nice. Yeah. Kind of like the taboo tribe. That's a, we're going to have to talk more about that. You have a mission behind That's your right. business. And what is, what I, I find so rewarding. I think you're going to ask me about it later. So maybe yeah. I'll say it. Okay. I'll ask you now. So with all the listeners and the 97 countries that are listening, I know, isn't that crazy? I wish I knew them all personally, but oh, I'm, I do ask them and I'll ask them again to connect with me on social media and let me know if you're a listener so I can connect back with you. And cause yeah, it's kind of cool when I get an email or a, a direct message from someone in Ireland and, and Idaho, it's cool either way. Um, so Karen, you're on here today to help my, my listeners not throw their, their work out the, out the window, out the door. So what three tips, you said you had three tips mm -hmm. To help them, uh, why business attorneys should save them money. So, yes, go for it. Three things like how um, business attorneys should save them money, and I'm I'm here. I guess it's a self interest, right? So I want you to call me. Mm -hmm. Why I should save you money? So it's a it's a win win. Mm -hmm. I fear that people hear lawyer and think as soon as I pick up the phone to call my lawyer, they're going to start billing time, and that's why people don't reach out mm -hmm. to attorneys. And I think the smaller the business or the earlier on the business, they think I can't afford an attorney. So what are they going to do, Sandy? Do it themselves. By doing what? What are they going to log on to? The Google. And who are they going to find there? Probably some, well, that somebody legal, that's going to, yeah, legal. The legal Zoom. Legal Zoom, legal whatever, okay. or they're just going to download some form and... And, and there's, a, there's a good side to legal Zoom because I get a lot of clients from legal Zoom. <laughs> legal Zoom clients become my clients because that's... Um, they, they, it messes my clients up and then they end up in my office because okay. I have to fix and undo legal Zoom. So that's a DIY. Mm -hmm. Legal Zoom gets them something, and they but there's and I don't even know the fees that a business um, gets charged for doing it a legal Zoom way. But you're going to pay twice mm -hmm. because you're going to pay a legal Zoom some fee less than probably a, a law firm fee. But you're going to pay the law firm fee later to fix it. To fix it. Yeah. But in between, something has gone wrong. And you're going to have to get it redone. So, and a lot um, of times it's taxes when they get to the tax, because you and I talked about that, right? It's because people get confused on, I'm a corporation or I'm an LLC, but I'm taxes, yeah, S corp. It that whole like the yeah. So, are you going to have an accountant on as your next? Person oh, I should. You absolutely. Well, should. Especially, I can't have an accountant on right now because they're starting. They to won't talk to you. No, they won't talk to you after after April fifteenth. Yes. Um, so next quarter, have yes. an accountant on. Um, yeah, so DIY is the first reason that they should. They and, should and yeah. contract review and negotiation. Mm. 
an attorney should save you money looking out for your best interests. If an attorney knows you and knows your business well, I talked with my clients of looking out. I'm very versed in contract negotiation and drafting. I don't have to go into all the reasons why. I teach a law school class on contract drafting and negotiation, looking out for your interests and trying to um, balance the leverage in the playing field. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a contract, if your business receives a contract from a big player in your industry, I guarantee you an attorney reviewed it. So if it's for $10,000, pay an attorney $500 to get it right on and, and negotiate it back mm -hmm. on your behalf or $1,000, whatever, and then go for, for, forward or pay an attorney $1,000 to create a template contract for you that you'll use 10 or 20 times. Mm -hmm. It's worth it for a couple of reasons. First, it protects your business and the rights and um, your terms and what you are wanting to protect mm -hmm. and payment terms, collection, um, the things that can go wrong. We're thinking of that on your behalf. Attorneys should be thinking of that on your behalf, but it also legitimizes your business. I can 100% tell you every contract that lands on my desk by reading it in the first one minute, I can tell you if an attorney looked at it or not, 100% of the time. And if you have a well put together contract, when you give that to your potential customer, if it's well put together, your reputation and the eyes of your customer just skyrocketed. Okay. That might land you that customer more quickly. So instead of buying a, a package of contracts on the on the Google, off the Google, buy them from you. The Google or the legal zoom or the yeah. rocket lawyer. Or the yeah. I tell a couple of my clients, I'm like, Mr. Rocket drafted that. Do not do not give me credit for that. That's from Mr. Rocket. I do not take responsibility for that. <laughs> okay. The next the next tip, can I move? Should I yeah, move on to the next three? Tip? Yes. Number three. The next one is either initially when you're getting started with your business, can save you money or time or when you're starting your nonprofit organization or when you're either setting up a subsidiary, buying or selling a business. The organization set up, having it done right and well and having all your documents in a row, even if you don't look at them for a while, having your binder of everything put together, again, legitimizes your business, has all your ducks in a row when your banker, your accountant, the next person to come along after you comes looking. If it's all right there and done, the headaches it will save you later on and the corporate formalities you will have mm -hmm. when you get to your insurance provider, the next thing to be done, it's all right there. I'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> with how many of my clients after four or five years have built the quite the little business and it is a nest egg and it is taking off. Awesome. Don't work on it then. You know, don't make your kids oh. go hunting for it. <laughs> when you want to go to Aruba and retire. And they're trying to find out how to, they're, they're trying to find out how to file the business entity report or something like that. And they don't even know where it is. Yep. We got that. I got a paralegal. That's, I have a paralegal and a half at our firm. That's what they do full time for all of our business clients. Good Wine Law does all things business all the time. And especially if you have one or two or three LLCs going and, and oh. keeping documents straight isn't your forte, it is ours. Yeah. And if you call me and you're my client and you call me asking, I'll be like, do you have your paperwork or call Karen? Because Right. And I got it. Yes. That's my third. Okay. So the three tips are don't do it. Don't do it yourself. Don't try to do it yourself. Don't get on the Google and the legal. The legal Zoom, Zoom will or, save you money. Yep. Karen will save and you money. For a few reasons. When yes. you get started either with straight from the start or when you, you know, M&A, merger and acquisition, buy a new company or, or sell a company at yep. those points. The last thing is staying organized. Yep keeping your um, contracts organized, keeping your business entities organized. If you use an attorney for that, here's the reason it will save you money. 
because it will keep the third party's questions answered fast. And when your insurance broker, your banker, your accountant, your HR consultant can get a response answered quickly, mm -hmm. that saves the business owner time. Time equals money. They know you have your stuff in order. You they don't ask it. you questions. If they don't ask you questions, they know you've got your stuff together. They don't worry about you. They lend you money. Mm -hmm. They return your taxes to you. They don't ask the next question. Stuff moves faster. Yep. You get stuff done. You're happier. You're less stressed. Your business moves more smoothly. Lawyers can keep things organized, keep your stuff in order. And, it, and should save you money. Yes. It should save well, you money. And, and again, this does not matter if you're a solo entrepreneur, a sole P like me, sole prop, sole proprietor, wherever you are in the world, whatever you call it, up to- uh, Unless you have one customer. Right, okay. If you have one customer yeah. and all you do is go like this back and forth all day, fine. Yeah. And they pay you on time and you mm -hmm. never have any problems and you never hire anyone else. Well, and, and I know, I do know I have some listeners that um, are like beach body coaches and they are, you know, part of that and that's fine, but they also, um, and you know who you are listening. Um, she binges me on Fridays. So, so she binge lins, listens to me, but that's the thing is like, there are still things that she may or may not be doing or that any of you who are part of a direct marketing, direct sales, whatever you want to call it, it's your side gig, um, making sure that you talk with a lawyer about things you can and can't do. I'm sure the franchise owners, the beach bodies, the R bonds, the whatever, give you parameters, but sometimes we, we take our own, I guess, a little li liberties in some things. So yes, calling an attorney to get set up properly, contracts written properly, especially when you're leveling up. Because, you know, like you said earlier, when you get a big contract, it, maybe this is your big deal. This is going to get you to that next level. And all of a sudden you're trying to read this contract or this um, offer yourself. I've never, I've bought and sold many homes. I've never tried to read that myself. Right. I, I have a realtor. <laughs> yes. So. Um, and someone who's used to it, I can pick out and say, wait, this is not standard. Do you yeah. know what they're asking you? Or this I see all the time, you shouldn't worry about it. Right. I can do that very easily awesome. and do that a lot with my clients. So, this you shouldn't worry about, this is unusual. This we should push back on. That's yeah. how it goes. That's how I work with my clients. And 10 page let... contracts, 20 page contracts, five page contracts. All right. Oh, and you have a podcast for- We do. Yeah. It's Sorry. not as seasoned as yours. We just started last year where I have issued about five episodes. Okay, but you're getting there. Oh, you start somewhere, episodes. right? Yeah, yeah. Starting, starting small. I've, I've done, I've recorded three. Okay. Two have been published. We're going to put up by the time this comes out. Maybe my third will have been out. So How I'm good. interviewing some clients, talking about some work I did last year on See? all the COVID research. Okay, so listeners, you can hear her talk live in action. Well, I guess recorded in action with recorded her. in action. The yeah. Good Wine Law Podcast, very original title, The Good and, Wine Law Podcast. And spelled G-U-T-W-E-I-N. Correct. Law. So, so those of you in Germany or in that area, you know how to say that. So um, and as I always end my podcast, I always say, this week I want to know. I want you to share. I mean, some stories can be horror stories. Some can be funny about maybe you or things you've heard about somebody that did it themselves or maybe a success story on how you got help from an attorney that saved your ass and any other questions you might have for Karen, how can they get a hold of you? Oh, absolutely. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's an easy way. Anyone can find me on LinkedIn, Karen Young. My middle initial is H and my email is Karen, K-A-R-E-N dot Young, Y-O-U-N-G at gutwinelaw.com, G-U-T-W-E-I-N law.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on here and for ending the first quarter with some, some badass tips on how to help everyone save money and not lose all the hard work that they've been 
they've been doing, they've been working for. Hopefully they've been working because the whole concept is no more excuses and getting off your ass and doing the work. So, all right, well, thank you, Karen. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person really soon. Yes. Kind of freaky, right? Yes, thanks for having me on. All right, bye.